If you've ever baked a cake, then you know that it will only turn out well if you stick to the recipe. The ingredients must be mixed in the right proportions and it must be baked at the correct temperature. It's exactly the same in the plastics industry. Without precise dosing, nothing is possible. Dosing is the process where one or more components are brought together in certain proportions. In the process chain, dosing is usually before mixing, where the materials are mixed as optimally as possible before extrusion. There are many options when it comes to how these materials are put together. We have particle materials such as granules, chips, microgranules and even powders can be used. Fibrous materials can also be used, for example glass fiber, carbon fiber or even natural fibers. Liquids of different viscosities are also used regularly, so even pastes can be used. This means that we have a large spectrum of materials which need to be dosed. Therefore, the mechanical solutions to transport or dose these materials are similarly varied. Screw dosing units are often used in many different variations as single or double screws. There are vibration channels, disc dosing units and ways of making use of gravity with the help of slide valves. While the types of dosing units described first dose actively, the valve gates use gravity to dose granules or another type of free-flowing material. There are different technical methods that can be used to dose a material. We will introduce them. With volumetric dosing, the materials are dosed according to volume. So, for example, 1 litre of white to 0.5 litres of red granules. Because different granules can have different densities, one must always perform a calibration test first, in order to achieve the correct result. Here, an experiment. One roughly 4 litres of the black granules weigh roughly 300 grams. The same volume of recycled PET weighs only about 130 grams. With gravimetric dosing, the material is dosed by weight. In our experiment, we have hung two containers from the scales. The dosing unit is a simple disc. The granules from both containers flow into another container through a pipe. For gravimetric dosing, we differentiate between two measuring principles, gain in weight and loss in weight. For gain in weight, the weight gain is measured in the destination container. For loss in weight, the weight loss in the source containers is measured as they're emptied. Both volumetric and gravimetric dosing can occur synchronous or asynchronous. This means that the materials end up in the destination container at the same time, synchronous, or one after the other, asynchronous. This is what it looks like. And then we come to mixing. It's important, and this is the highest priority, that a homogeneous mix is passed on to the destination, the processing machine. Therefore, mixing is an important part of the dosing process, which usually consists of dosing and mixing. If the materials were not mixed thoroughly enough, the color and quality differences can occur. It can be a challenge to mix two materials with very different properties. Take, for example, salt and peanuts. With this mix, a so-called demixing can happen in the mixer itself. This means that the mixing process actually separated the two materials. This is why there's the option to do without an active mixing process. You can do this when the dosed materials are brought together synchronous, i.e. two materials, for example, that are required for a recipe, are delivered to the destination at the same time in a material flow. Then they are at the entry of the machine as the recipe demands and may not need to be actively mixed. Any additional homogenization is done by the processing machine. Precision and reproducibility are the most important factors for dosing and mixing in industrial proportions. Dosing units should be chosen according to the material properties. 
one differentiates between volumetric and gravimetric dosing. The subsequent mixing ensures the best possible result.